The Holocaust is quite possibly the most difficult and sensitive subject matter one can put on screen. How do you even begin to grasp the evil and suffering on such a magnitudinal scale on a finite image? And how does one show these atrocities on screen without becoming exploitative? Any director with good sense should have one thought when tackling this subject, and that is how do I not accidentally make Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS? There are many ways artists have come to terms with this on screen. Spielberg single-handedly improved Holocaust education worldwide, showing the gradual descent into eliminationism in Schindler's List. Benini used broad comedy to explore the absurdity of anti-Semitism in Life is Beautiful. One Nemes expressionistically isolated us in the view of a main character compartmentalizing all that is happening around him. Now, Jonathan Glazer returns to us nearly 10 years after his previous film, Under the Skin, which I regard as the best film of the previous decade, and adds to this excellent cinematic scholarship of the Holocaust. The zone of interest follows Rudolf Hoss, the Commandant of Auschwitz, as he and his family live the idyllic Nazi life just outside the walls of the infamous concentration camp. This is a tough sell for any audience, a cold and dispassionate film about monsters. But Glazer takes care here. Instead of showing us these atrocities on screen, he instead shows us the banality of evil, the mundane day-to-day -day of the Nazi bureaucracy, the goal of which was to cause a genocide taking place just a mere matter of meters from this family home. The concept for this should be near impossible for a filmmaker to pull off, except Glazer succeeds spectacularly, and it's in no small part to the intelligent and rounded grasp of fascism and Nazi ideology which the film showcases. The entire family dynamic, which on the surface seems perfect, is entirely conditioned by these toxic beliefs, and there's a very subtle air of the kind of gender roles that this monstrous philosophy imposes across their interactions. The film's direction is subtle, it's always keeping you at a distance. One of cinema's great powers is to allow you to sympathise with irredeemable characters, but this is not what Glazer is trying to do here. This is anthropological. We are studying these people, and we are trying to understand how they can casually inflict so much evil on the world. Of course, there is no answer to this, and it's all the more terrifying because of it. The cinematography matches the feeling. It's very wide, and the camera is generally placed in the corners of rooms or other unconventional angles. It's very Lanthimos influenced, but not in a quirky way like his films. Rather, it's strange and alien. Cinematographer Lucas Zal who's also Pawlikowski's longtime cinematographer, is one of the best in the business, and him and Glazer had a real vision for this film. The film's imagery is haunting. It's mostly entirely realistic, a rarity for Glazer, and this is extended to the upsettingly well-realized sound mixing. The subtle pops of gunfire in the background hinting at the horrors taking place off screen are all the more upsetting by how nonchalant they appear to be. You wonder how many of these bullets you don't even register in the soundtrack, and it further brings you deeper into this cold and unforgiving space. Occasionally, however, Glazer allows the surreal to enter through repeated dream sequences and incongruous transitions. Despite how out there these rare moments are, I found them to be entirely in keeping with the atmosphere and mood of the film, and I admire the usually extroverted Glazer's restraint in limiting these moments. The film by and large feels very Hanukkah, and both tonally and thematically it can be compared to The White Ribbon, which of course is a must watch if you've not already seen it. Like most of Hanukkah's work, this could also be read as a satire of the bourgeoisie, of a picturesque life built in the proximity to and because of the immense amount of suffering happening behind a big wall around a big house. The allegory is there, but crucially as a literal exploration of the people who committed some of the worst atrocities in history, it still works. And while the film's ending appears to have proven controversial, I found it a masterstroke, and I left the cinema thinking about just how we as a society collectively remember those who suffered in the Holocaust. Finally, the acting in this film is outstanding. Very understated, yet genuinely scary. Christian Friedel's performance as Hoss is bone-chilling. The dispassion for which he talks about his work and the mundanity he brings to the role encapsulates the film. Sandra Huller, however, is the show-stealer here. And if it wasn't for Lily Gladstone's performance in Killers of the Flower Moon, I would be backing her 100% for the Best Actress Oscar. The World War II generation will be gone in a matter of decades. There has been painstaking work to preserve their memories and factually quantify the horrors that took place. Narrative cinema is the vast majority of people's window into history. The zone of interest isn't Schindler's List. This won't educate you on what happened, but it will make you think about how we think about these facts. And the film's ultimate critique of society's collective feelings on the Holocaust is a powerfully thought-provoking stab to the heart, akin to the ending of Radu Jude's criminally underseen, I do not care if we go down in history as barbarians. It feels almost strange to put an out of 10 rating on a piece of art like this, especially after writing my previous paragraph. 
I'm very sure that my usual enthusiastic line delivery has been somewhat dampened by the subject matter of what I'm talking about. As a film, this is among the year's best and has cemented Glazer as one of my favourite filmmakers. It's a film that I'm sure will be talked about long after it's released, and I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, please consider tipping me on Ko-Fi. The link is in the description, and also in the description is the link to my podcast, The Extreme Cinema Podcast. Thank you so much for watching this video, please like, share and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.